guys, it's Mia Redrick here, the mom strategist. I'm so excited about this scope. I'm going to be sharing very simply today what might be getting in the way of your next level. What might be getting in your way of your next level. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. I support clients with both life and business success. You can always stay connected to me at miaredrick.com by signing up for my list there or on Facebook. Hi, Orjean. My On Facebook, Mia Redrick, the mom strategist over there. Now today, what I'm going to be teaching about very simply, very plainly, I've just got five Five, five simple tips on what might be getting in the way of your next level. Now, I know so many of us desire to get to that next level. We've dreamed about it. Maybe you're thinking about it. Hey, darling, but what's getting in the way? I've got five simple things. And my only goal here is to support you with moving forward, with understanding what that shift could look like. Or maybe you, you'll hear what I'm saying and say, that's me, all right? And now you'll know you need to do something about it, right? So I just want to shake your shoulders here. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. I'm a business coach and I support clients with both life and business success. The vast majority of my clients are moms, um, but I do coach about 5% of my clients are male and maybe 10% or so are women that don't have children, all right? And what I believe is that your life informs your business. Your business doesn't inform your life. Your business is not your hustle. It's not your grind. It's not, all right? You get to stand on your gifts, your talent, your education, your background, package, you know how and something that you can you know you can you can serve the world with your gifts right that's what i do i support giants my clients are smart they're sharp they believe in self investment and they believe in god right and that's something that i absolutely love to do now my story for those of you who are just meeting me it's just pretty simple i, I got started my business about 31 years ago 31 did i just say 31 years ago yes i did 13 okay <laughs> Not 31 years ago, 13 years ago, I had the idea to go to work as myself. I wanted to uh, combine my background as a corporate trainer and my love of motherhood, right? 31 years ago, where'd that come from? Well, let me see. 31 years ago, I was not thinking about my business or maybe was thinking about me. Maybe, I don't know. But 13 years ago, I decided that I wanted to go to work as myself. I woke up one day and I said to my husband, I want to go to work as myself, and I had no idea how was I going to combine my background as a corporate trainer and the systems that I had in motherhood into a business, okay? And I remember talking to some of the parents. We were all trying to figure out for ourselves what we were going to do with this next phase of our life and standing on our own gifts and talents and skills. And so I went to a small business resource center in my town, and I was told by that director at that business center that... This idea of mom coaching, we didn't use those words because the word didn't exist at that time, that it didn't make any sense that I should give up this idea of coaching moms because no one would ever pay me to coach moms, right? So I always tell you this because maybe you've, you're like me, like maybe you've got that unconventional dream too. And somebody said the exact same thing to you. I kept looking for someone that could help me, could support me. I ended up bumping into a coach online um, and her model changed my life. It was the first time I had ever seen an example of someone doing what I wanted to do, but my own way, right? Maybe you can relate to that. Um, and um, I went to one of our live events and decided that I wanted to work with her and the rest is history. I built an amazing coaching business. I work from the comfort of my home. I work 31 hours a month servicing giants, smart, sharp, people who believe in self-investment, who want to take their ideas or education and build a business that they flat love leveraging their gifts. My clients understand that their life informs their business. Your business does not inform your life. And so most of my clients are looking to get more free time so they can show up in the way that they want to for their family. You know, they're looking to be able to make a difference in the world with their skills and their talents. And if this is you, then you need to reach out to me. You can always go to miaredrick.com or check out my bio here on Periscope if you've been looking for a kick butt coach. I am a kick butt coach, I have to tell you that. But as a result of building my business, I have to tell you that the models matter, okay? So, you know, you could have a business, but if that business owns you, then you have no freedom, right? And we, my husband and I, had like this 
we had a crisis. I mean, eight years ago, my husband developed kidney disease. And because I had built my business with Time Rich Models, I've always built my coaching business from my home. I never went on the road to build my coaching business. So my clients have always come to me. I've never had to hustle or do events, speaking events to get coaching clients, all right? Um, and I was so grateful for that because I could still be there for my family during that time when they needed me most. And I could be there for my kids. And I didn't have to compromise my income. And I'm talking to those of you who only know one way to generate income. And that's why I wanted to use that example. But also, I love the fact that as a result of building an amazing business, and amazing businesses, I also own a, a, um, a, a, com a commercial laundry, we um, were able to hire a private physician for my husband, which allowed him to get an elevated le level of medical care when he needed it most during that uh, dialysis process and then later when he got his kidney transplant. And I think that's why he did amazingly well. So I always like to tell you this because to me, that's why you want to build a great business. Hey there, God, darling. Good to see you. But also, I love the fact that as a result of building my business, I've been able to, my husband and I have been able to give our kids a world-class education. We've invested over $715,000 in our kids' private school tuition. And to me, that's a significant accomplishment. Because I know that there's somebody out there, that's why you want to go into business. You want to educate your kids the way you want to. Get that, right? Thank you so much. It's all short. It's all gone. Um, thank you so much. And uh, so that's why you want to build your business, right? Or maybe um, you just want to date your husband in the middle of the day. I'm into that. I'm into that. Okay. <laughs> I'm into that. I'm into that. Thank you so much, right? So I'm real excited about that. And, you know, what I love is the fact that my kids are 12, 15, and 19 years old, and they've never seen mom or dad ever work a job because we built businesses that once we got free, we stayed free. Now, that's the message you're going to hear over here. On my channel, one of the things I'm always going to talk to you about is sustainable success. There are lots of places you can go that will tell you flash cash, instant proof success, but all I know... All I know is that we built several businesses and they took time, energy, and effort to build solid foundations that have allowed us to be full-time entrepreneurs for over two decades. My kids have never seen mom or dad work a job. I had my kids come to uh, my last retreat. A lot of people met my kids. What planted the seed in your head to start working for yourself? That's a great question. I'll answer that in a second. Um, we invited my kids to my retreat and they didn't know the questions, right, in no this past November. And that was one of the things the kids said, you know, like they've always had their mom and dad around because we are the boss, right? That's like, to me, if you're a parent, that's what you want. All right. What planted the seed in my mind to be an entrepreneur? Here's the true story. Um, I think the seed for me to be an entrepreneur was planted when I was in middle school, actually, right? All right, just keep saving, just keep saving, just keep saving, um, and it'll happen for you, all right? Um, and I can't wait to work with you. Um, so let me just say, what planted the seed for me was middle school. I was a, um, I was in something called like Junior Achievement. Some of you guys might remember this. And it was a program that kind of taught you about entrepreneurship. And we had to kind of come up with our own products. And it wasn't quite Shark Tank-ish, but it was my first exposure as a middle schooler to entrepreneurship. I was in middle school, all right? And that that was probably the first memory I had. And then, I, and I'm going to keep this real quick because you know I can be a little long-winded. But the other thing that happened to me that was significant, and I know this, this blueprint changed my whole life, was my first and my second job. So all I'm going to say is that um, in Baltimore, a new harbor was created, you know, so like a new harbor was a pretty big deal 30 years ago. And so I was maybe 16 years old at the time looking for my very first job. And so I went to work for a ice cream company. It was called Swinson's. And it was at the time that the waffle cone was created. And you would take the waffle iron and, you know, literally fold the cones in front of the customers. Now, no one had ever seen this before. So there would be lines from the time we got to work. I was working in the ice cream parlor. From the time we got to work until the time you left, like hundreds of people in line for a waffle cone. And it was, and we were making the waffle cones. I think that was the first time that I saw what innovation and demand looks like. Physically, you know, I actually saw that, right? And it was imprinted in my mind. That was my first job. The second job I had, you guys, this is going to blow you away. My second job I had was I worked as a puppeteer, okay, for a puppet company in the same inner harbor. And she purchased 
high-end puppets, right? Primarily for people who did like magic acts or who did performances, right? Um, but at a high, like puppets that were selling for like $300, $500, $1,000. You can't even imagine because this is 30 years ago, all right? I'm saying high-end puppets, all right? And I worked there and I remember how much money we made at the end of the day. These are puppets. And again, I had this whole I exposure to innovation and demand. Innovation and demand. And okay, let me tell you this other thing. And then the third experience I had, my third job, okay, I ended up running a cart at the same harbor. And I sold. Now, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. And these kids were out of um, Boston University, had come up with an idea to take um, a, a aluminum, a, a enamel, and bake it on aluminum. And they took cartoon um, pictures of cartoons and cut them out. And they baked the um, aluminum on the enamel for like barrettes and bolo ties. Bolo ties. Hey there, darling, in Baltimore. And these guys were closing. And I managed that cart like four grand a day. This is 30 years ago. Innovation and demand. Who's buying bolo ties in Baltimore? All right. I just want you to hear me on this and barrettes. All right. And I think that being so young, 16, 18 years old, my first couple of jobs all exposed me as long with my middle school experience to innovation and demand. All right. And, and I was sold because these folks were like crushing it. All right. So that was a long winded answer, but that's my answer. That was my first exposure. So that's how I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what it was going to be or what it was going to look like because I was a young girl at the time. All right. So did you guys like that answer? So today what I'm going to talk about, uh, Hey, Latasha, um, today, what I'm going to be teaching on is what might be getting in the way of your next level. Hey there, darling. What might be getting in the way of your next level? And I'm going to break this down. This is very simple. I'm going to keep this to five, really five simple points. Thank you so much for sharing. If you guys haven't shared yet on Periscope, on Twitter, on Facebook, please do. I'm going to break this down. Now, five things that might be getting in the way of your next level. Now, my only goal, this is a mindset scope. Now, my only goal is to shift you. Like, my only goal is to get you to hear something I'm saying and say, hmm, that might be me, okay? All right? And I, and if this is you, the question is, what are you going to do about what you're hearing, all right? So, and for those of you who are just coming in the room, I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. You can always stay connected to me beyond Periscope at MiaRedrick.com or on Facebook. Mia Redrick, the mom strategist. I'm a business coach and kick butt business coach, I might add. Um, all right. So if you guys are ready, uh, if you're ready, I am ready. I'm going to share today what is getting in the way of your next level. Who's ready? Anybody ready to hear these points on five ways that you know, what might be getting in the way of your next level? If you're ready, just type right here. I'm ready, Mia. And then I'm going to get started. Okay. Or Jean is ready. Okay. And then Fumi is ready. Is anyone else ready? Living Fragrance is ready. Um, Pearl is ready. Okay. Quasi is Quasi? Quasi? Is ready. Okay is ready. All right. Anybody else ready? All right. Cause you got to be ready to receive. That's the reality of what it looks like. All right. So I'm going to get started. Um, so my goal is to move you forward. All right. All right. Number one. All right. What my fortune is ready. What might be getting in the way of your next level? Here's the first thing that five simple points, but they're deep. Number one, um, what you don't know. Okay. And I want to talk about that for a minute. Um, what you don't know, we can call that education what you don't know. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So l most of the time, I have the great privilege to coach people who are, they're smart, they're sharp, you know, they're giants. They've already done great things in their careers or in their life. They've got amazing soft skills. You know, maybe they've given advice to people already. They might not be getting paid for it because they're trying to figure that part out. Or maybe they already have a book or a speaking program and maybe it's not monetizing in the way that it is or in the way that they want it to be. Or maybe they've always wanted to create a product leveraging what they know. Maybe they're a physician and they're trying to figure out how to take what they know how to do. They learned in medical school using a completely different way to be able to serve a different demographic or passively with products, right? And so I work with people who already know a lot. They already have 
uh, a skill, right? They're already smart, just like you. They're already smart. They already have a background. They already have education. They already have gifts, all right? They already have talents, all right? We all have that, all right? But what gets in the way of your next level isn't what you have. It's what you don't know. Or, you know what I mean? It's what you don't know, all right? And so let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Like I was talking to a woman today and she was telling me about, she was a coach and she was telling me about her coaching business and she was telling me about how the business was structured already and what she's been doing and how she's been monetizing and how she's been finding customers. And then I asked her, hey, darling. And then I asked her, I said, well, tell me a little bit about how you are generating income in your business. And so she started telling her models for profitability in her business. And I could see like right there, like, wow, okay, that's missing. Okay. So sometimes, and sometimes it's not what you know how to do. All right. That's in the way. All right. A lot of times it's what you do not know how to do that is really getting in the way. And I will say that um, if you ever want to hit your next level, the question is that are you in a position? Hey there, first time super heart. Thank you so much for a super heart. Don't think I've ever had one before. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Um, I think sometimes that it, it's really difficult because if you're already smart, if you're already sharp, if you're already out there crushing it, if you've already created success, if people are already saying you are amazing and you're helping me, it's easy. Thank you so much. It's easy to believe that you know what to do. So I work with people all the time who tell me what they know how to do. But I will tell you that that if you want to hit your next level, the questions you need to be asking is, what, a, what am I missing? What don't I know? Because it's what you don't know that's keeping you from being able to monetize in your business, grow your business, have a better relationship, be more attractive to clients, retain your clients, whatever it is that you're looking for. It is what you do not know. And so whenever I am, let's say I'm in a coaching program, and, and whenever I am in... um I am in a position to be a student. That's what I come for. I don't come with my ego. I don't care about the success that I've already created. I come to find out. I come to learn what I don't know. And to do that, I've learned that a lot of times when people are thinking about learning, hope you guys are getting value from this. They, they, they come and they think they're only focusing on the thing that they're listening to. But great students learn not only from what they hear, but they learn also from the example, but like how things are set up, how things are positioned, you know what I mean? Or uh, how things are organized, how things are orchestrated. In my opinion, that is also part of the education of what you do not know. And it's interesting to me, and I'm gonna tell you what it looks like. Let's say I'm um, talking to someone that says that they've, they've coach with people before. They've worked with other coaches before. And then I'll say to them, okay, great. So tell me how your business is set up. And then I can see immediately they don't have any infrastructure, right? In their business, no infrastructure, no systems for client payments. They don't have a system to communicate with their clients that makes sense. And I'll say, well, you were in a coaching program for said period of time. You know, did they not learn from the example? They were not students. So one of the things I want you to understand, write this here, hashtag student. What prevents many people from getting to their next level is that it's what you do not know. And it's the fact that, you know, often we come in so much with wanting to validate what we do know. And wanting to prove to other people that we're, you know, we're okay, instead of humbling ourselves and saying, I came here to learn. Like, I'm going to be a blank state, uh, a blank slate, right? Imagine if you approached your classes or your mentors, your teaching, your training that way, as if you didn't know anything at all. And you just said, I just want to learn from you. This is how I approach my coach. I'm never, I, it doesn't matter what I know. This is what I'm thinking because I'm trying to figure out what I don't know. So even if she says to me, well, you probably know that. I'll say, that's okay. That's okay. Just tell me again. All right. Because I'm a student, right? Like I want to learn what I don't know because I know that 
What I don't know is what's preventing me from getting to my next level. Does that make sense? This could be the same for those of you who are, maybe you have a funnel. Maybe you've got a broken funnel um, for your client process, right? You're looking to generate leads in a consistent basis. And all you're focused on is like, I already have a funnel set up. You know what I mean? I already have my product set up. And you're focusing on what you already have instead of being teachable and saying, okay, listen, I'm not getting the results that I want. I'm not converting the clients that I want. So clearly something is broken in my funnel. So you need to listen, right? Student there to learn. And I will tell you that that is really number one. I think so many people don't get to their next level because in the truest sense, they are not students. I, and I think that that maybe it's part of the way that we learn from the very beginning that a lot of times we approach learning in entrepreneurship like you approach learning in a class in school. So when there are things that you didn't like, you just kind of tuned out what you didn't like. But entrepreneurship is different. Like if you are making an investment to learn how to sell, you've got to listen to the different steps and components so you can learn what you don't know. And then you got to practice those things. And that adds value to that learning process. So I hope that this is supporting somebody out there because maybe you've been saying, you know, I'm, I'm listening to these audios or I've got this curriculum, but maybe you're not being a student. Maybe you're just listening. You're not implementing the things you're learning or you're not doing every single component and it's what you're missing that's keeping you from going to your next level. I know this to be true. I see this a lot of times when I'm talking to somebody and helping them tweak their sales process. You know, they'll tell me, yeah, I'm really great at selling. And I'll say, okay, great. So, you know, let me hear the sales conversation. And I'll tell them, you know, maybe I'll role play with them. I'll break down for them what they need to say. I'll give them some scripting or what that could be. And then they'll come back maybe a month later telling me what their results are. And I'll say, okay, well, pretend I'm the customer. Let's do it again. And they skip steps, all right? I'm just telling you that you've got to be a student. you got to follow the steps, all right? And that is what prevents so many people from getting to the next level. Number two, all right? Number two, all right? Um, what prevents you from getting to your next level? Who you do not know, all right? So the first thing I wanted you to understand was what you, what you do not know prevents you from getting to your next level, your education, right? Applied education, all right? Prevents you from getting to your next level. The second thing I want you to know is who you do not know. That's your affluence, okay? Who you do not know, hey, Tavis, is your affluence, all right? And people don't get this, right? Like, oh, it's just so interesting to me because, you know, remember I say all the time, hey, darling, you know how I say all the time, your ego will keep you broke? There are people who are so consumed with themselves, all right, and that, you know, when they are with themselves or with other people who are with themselves and they are together, they feel like, you know, we're the cat's meow. You guys have seen that, right? And what what is most important, hey, Mary, what's most important is who you do not know, affluence, okay? So you want to make sure that in your network, you have an affluent network, not an ego driven network. You need to have a network that has affluence because a network with affluence means that there are opportunities that are flowing through there. There's information that once you learn it, it can change your life. There is, um, if someone that has affluence exposes you to an opportunity, you are already so much better set up than just dealing with average networks. A lot of us are, we really struggle with that because maybe, you know, we've got some insecurities about hanging around people who, you know, um, have affluence or maybe you don't know people who have affluence or maybe even I always say that we're so used to being around people that fake having affluence, like they fake affluence in that they want you to think having affluence is having a handbag or, you know what I mean, or eating a certain dinner or riding in a limo, something silly. But the fact of the matter is what I want you to understand is that when you are around the right networks, when people are talking about at a high level what you need to invest in, when they're talking about major trends that are happening, when they're able to share for you closed door meetings, when they're able to make introductions to you that instantly can, you know, change your whole world, 
and create opportunity for you, that's called affluence. When you are with people who can simply pick up the phone and as a result of them having a great network and a great, um, you know, a, um, a great credibility, they can open doors for you that most people cannot. And I will tell you, if you do nothing else, if you don't do anything else that I'm talking about today, I will tell you that this is something you have to work on and nurture. This is something that's very important to me. It's one of the reasons that I love doing boards because when I join boards, I'm always around I'm always around people who are affluent. I'm always around thought leaders. I'm always around people who who give at a high level. I'm always around people who own things, who are incredible, incredible, incredible people who have access to other ideas, people, and things that are not accessible to me at a real basic level. And I will tell you that that will flat change your business. If you ever wonder um, why, why in in, uh, maybe in your world, why some people get to their next level and why other people don't is who they have access to. It's who they know. All right. And you, maybe you've heard this, like, you know, people always say it's, it's not, you know, what you do is who, you know, that's true. It's true. And if you, even if you don't have that currently, you should set as a goal to get to know people who have affluence. All right. And this has always been one of those things that's been really important to me for me to mastermind with people who have affluence. All right. Um, for me to, you know, in my town to be a part of boards and other leadership uh, meetings that have affluence because there are things that are being talked about. There's access to people who in the truest sense have real success. All right. And the thing about being around people that have affluence is that they have real abundance. I'm not talking about fake abundance. I'm talking about folks that can really change your world, that you want to get a corporate deal. Their best friend is the dot, dot, dot. OK, they can pick up the phone and change your world. And I think so many people spend their time is are you guys getting value? Um, so many people spend their time with false affluence. Well, it's not affluence, okay? It's the illusion of affluence because uh, if you're ever in those meetings, right, and you're around people who are in a position to change your world in one phone call, you will understand that that's where you need to be playing at a high level, like really, okay? And if something is getting in your way, I'm going to tell you one of the things that gets in the way um, for most people is not having, a, having affluence in their world. They don't have it. You know what I'm saying? So some people say, you know, like you are the product of the five people you hang out with. Now, that might be true in terms of your likelihood for your own earnings, your own income. But I think that it's bigger than that. Imagine having a world that exposes you to a whole nother world, right? That's what I love, right? I love being around my friends who are fluent because they teach me things about law. They teach me, teach me things about contracts and negotiation. They teach me things about license and use agreements. They teach me things about just things that, that, that the average person is not talking about. They have access to people. They can pick up the phone. They can, they can, they can construct deals or open a door or get you in a meeting or get you prepared in ways that most people cannot. And if you are not working on your affluence, I want you to do this. I might be getting in the way of your next level. And, and you might be saying, like, what could I do? Like, what, what could how can I start? You know, this is this might sound really hokey to you, but I'm telling you, this is what I would do. I would start looking um, in my local newspaper. And one second. I would start looking in the local newspaper. And, you know, um, Sometimes they feature certain businesses or certain people who had prominent businesses, and I would invite them to lunch. I would start hanging out with people who are in a position to teach me things and mentor me in ways that are not just conventional ways. It's just going to change how you look at things. It's going to change who you have access to. It's going to change how you network. It's going to change how you, you charge for your services, right, because of the association. Thank you so much, right? It's really true, all right? Um, number three, number three. All right. So today what we're talking about very simple, simply is what is getting in the way of your next level. It's a mindset scope. The first thing is what you do not know. All right. And so many people are focused on what they do know. So they listen to things and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that before, but it's not what you heard. 
It's what you didn't hear that gets in the way of you creating success. All right. And I was saying to them that saying to everybody that's listening that literally when I am a student, like I was at my coach's event, maybe it was maybe, maybe it was a year ago. She had an event. I went to her event. Right. And when I went to the event, let me tell you, everyone went, you guys might know the story. Like it was lunchtime. Right. And the bell rang. Ding, ding, ding. And then I was like, no, the bell didn't ring, but it was lunchtime and they said, oh no, it was coffee break time. And they said, um, okay, it's time for a coffee break. And then all these people, you know, the herd, ding, 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 they go out to have coffee. And I was like, I don't want coffee. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to go to the bathroom. I want to see what happens, right? I want to ha- see what happens during the break. Okay. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to, I'm a student. I came to learn. I didn't come to have coffee. And it's so interesting because so many people are so reliant on like somebody else telling them, this is time for the break. This is time, you know what I mean? They go to the bathroom break. This is time for the coffee break. And they are not students. And what happened actually during the break was they had made an offer and like a small percentage of the room, maybe 35, 45% of the people said yes. And they reconstructed the offer for a different offer. And that's what happened while everyone was out there getting coffee. Okay. And I'm like, oh my gosh. All right. So what I'm telling you is that it's what you don't know. I hope you guys are getting this. It's what you don't know that is getting in the way. It's not what you do know. Because if I hadn't seen that, I wouldn't have learned a new way to make an offer during a break. All right, number two. All right, um, who you do not know. Now, affluence is really significant um, if you want to up-level. And a lot of people are trying to up-level with people that aren't even affluent. All right, so what I want to tell you is that in your network, infuse your network with people who have an incredible net worth. All right. And your whole world will change the opportunities that will come before the ideas, the access to different people who can really, truly do something for you. All right. And I always say that, look, people who are struggling, they can't, they can't help themselves. You know, they can't help you. You need to be a part of a network of people who are fluent, who can help you. I hope you guys are getting this number three. And, and it's your responsibility to nurture that and to make that happen. Number three, number three, what you do not know. All right. That's implementation. All right. What you do not know is getting in, uh, what you do not know is getting in the way of your next level, right? I'm sorry. What you do not do, what you do not do is getting in the way of your implementation. What do I mean by that? Oh my goodness gracious. You can have the greatest ideas in the world, the best. Okay. It could be most, the most amazing. It could be super exciting. You could have the best book concept out there. You can have an awesome coaching program, but if you don't implement, all right, if you don't bring your A game and you don't finish the things that you start, that's what's getting in the way. This is why you're not making the moolah. This is why people aren't, you know, knocking your doors down, buying your products. You know, it's funny because I will talk to people all the time. They'll tell me, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got this idea for a coaching program. I'm like, okay, so tell me about it. And they know exactly what the program is. And then I'll say, well, how many of those did you sell? Well, um, I haven't put it together yet. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So what is getting in the way the next level is often implementation, accountability, doing the thing that you know will create the result for you. I'm just bringing my A game. You guys know there are no hearts here, but I did get a super heart. So you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Because I'm always going to tell you 100%. The fact of the matter is faith without work is dead. Okay. If you believe in the things that you see, then do the work around those things. If you don't implement the things that you believe are going to be great things for other people, no one will be able to even say yes to you. So a lot of people are saying out there, hey, you know, I'm not having success in this thing or that thing. And it is it is all around the fact that you haven't even implemented it. Like if I wanted to to to, to buy what you have right now, could I take it home? You know what I mean? Can I go and, and purchase it? Is it real clear? Is it plain for me to say what this is? And that's what I find all the time. Maybe you're a speaker out there without any rates. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, but you do want to speak, but you just don't have rates. That means that if I wanted to book you as a speaker, 
what do I pay you? Okay. And you're trying to understand why people aren't paying you is because you're not set up to be paid. You didn't implement what you need to do, right? You don't have your one sheet done. You know what I mean? You, you don't have, we don't know what your speaking topics are. We don't know what your rate is. So therefore we can't hire you because you know, of what you did not do. And this is so, so, so true. All right. And for, for those of you who are trying to hit your next level, all right, it is all about what you do. All right. Because let me tell you the growth, the change, the results is all in the implementation. When you see people that create results, you better know that they are implementing in ways that you're not. And this is, this is the thing that I think is tough about entrepreneurship and the success of entrepreneurship is that you never get to see when someone's actually doing the work. You only get to see the glossy part. You only get to see the results or what people tell you, but you only get to see the glossy part. So you don't really get to see what it's like, you know what I'm saying, when they're doing the work, you know what I mean? You don't get to see how they got to show up the way that they did. But I will tell you this, that people who achieve significant success implement, they do vast majority of them, unless they're born into a family, you know what I'm saying? And, and, uh, you know, and they've got different kinds of circumstances. The fact of the matter, most successful people are implementing. And if you want to achieve success and you're ready to hit your next level, that's what you're going to have to do. All right. All right. Are you guys getting value? Are you getting value? I hope you are. All right. For those of you who are just joining me today, I'm so glad that you're here. Please share on Twitter, on Facebook, on Periscope. Today, I'm talking about what is getting in your way of the next level. What's getting in the way of the next level? And I talked about three things so far. What you do not know, who you do not know, and what you do not do. I'm keeping it so simple, but I'm breaking it down. Number four. Number four. Now, what is not available to you? Okay, get me on this one. What is not available to you? What is not available to you? So what's keeping you from your next level? It's what's not available to you. Let me tell you what I mean. All right, so <clears throat> one of the reasons that I love to do masterminds at a high level is because of what's available. <laughs> you know, what's available to me? Okay, the help the mindset, the models, the, you know, it's awesome, right? It, it's like, that's what's available to me as a result of me saying yes to myself and investing in myself. Now I have things available to me that would not normally be available to me. I'm going to give you a great example. Um, maybe eight years ago, I um, was part of this group, this mastermind group. And some of you guys know the story. I was a bunch of women. Um, and we all coach with the same coach and we formed a circle called the sister circle. And it was an accountability group where we all uh, consistently every single week, we checked in with each other. And of these women, one woman wanted to, she wanted to be like a top um, do, uh, with commercial investing uh, in real estate. All right. And so when I met her, she hadn't sold anything, bought or sold anything. But that was her dream. So as a result of us being mastermind partners, okay, um, she ended up, because we were holding each other accountable, right, to the big dreams that we had and challenging each other to our light, right? She ended up doing a million-dollar transaction, her first million-dollar transaction. This is about eight years ago. Now she owns her own retreat on a couple acres. It's up in New York. It's exceptionally successful. All right. There was another woman who was a part of our mastermind group who was a psychiatrist, is a psychiatrist, who wanted to do um, television. And she ended up getting signed to the show Hoarders. Okay, hear me now. Had never done any TV before. Okay, but this is one of the things. She's challenging her to a light. We all are supporting one another in this way. There was another woman who wanted to um, be a speaker. And that's exactly what she did. She started her own speaking business. That's what she does today. She's a speaker. She's an international speaker. That's what she wanted to do. Hadn't spoken to anyone when we were all together, mastermind together. Okay, I, I want you guys to get this. There was another woman in our group who actually is my best friend today um, who wanted to run international. She wanted to do a movement, that an international movement. She's done exactly that. It's the Leverage Spread Wealth Movement, and it's all around the world. She's gone to all these countries teaching her coaching um, philosophy. What I'm telling you is that none of that existed. 
I wanted to be a coach, a mom coach, you know what I mean? At a time, nobody even really knew what it was. And as a result of being in that group, I've had the great privilege to literally be signed to Emmy-nominated, nationally syndicated shows as the mom strategist, coaching millions around the world. What I'm telling you here is number four, is that what is not available to you, all right, is keeping you from getting to your next level. See, when you have invested in yourself such that you have the think tank, the mindset, the network, your people that are pulling for you. You know, you, you have these ideas that are coming, you know, to, to elevate you. Maybe it's coaching. Maybe that's what it looks like for you. I don't know. Okay. But when you have a network that's powerful, you're powerful. And that a lot of people forget this, that I never forget this. Like I'm thinking like all of these people I was networking with, Oh, it was a dream. We all had like dreams of what we wanted to do. And we all manifested our dreams, not by just sitting in a room dreaming about it, but doing the work and holding each other accountable. We had a network. So, and if that's not available to you, okay, because you haven't decided to invest in a network of people who your ambition level and above, I'm telling you, you're missing out. And I, I mean that with my entire being, all right? What is not available to you is a direct result of the investments that you are willing or not willing to make. And there are people, I mean, and I'm not selling anybody on coaching because that's not what I do, right? People who choose me, choose me because I'm free, right? You're sharp, you're smart, you're ready to get it done and you want accountability and authenticity, you know, and you're ready to stand on your gifts and your talent. I'm, I'm, I'm into that. But I'm going to tell you for sure that a lot of people aren't getting to their next level because you're not in the room with people that can elevate you to your next level. And, that, and that's really important. That's different than affluence. Affluence is being around the heat. People who are who are cutting deals, who know how things are changing, that and they can make a difference in your life. They advice, they elevate your what you know, okay? Um, and the opportunities that, that are available as a result of dealing with people who are affluent. Your network is different. When you have a network of, of people that you've invested in that care about your success, there's something really magical about it. There's something amazing about it. Um, and it's why every single year, I'm just I'm just a mastermind junkie because I that has single-handedly always elevated me, people who've been committed to my success. What about you? I hope you guys are getting value. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying here. And number five. All right, number five, so it's just five things. Um, what is keeping you from your next level is what you do not think, all right? Oh my gosh, this is so good, guys. What you do not think. So this is what I want you to understand. What you do not think, your mindset, is the reason that you are not in your next level. And and it, and the mindset impacts all of these other things, like all of these other things. Your mindset is going to impact um, what is not available to you? Because maybe because of your mindset, you're like, I don't have money to invest in myself right now because um, my kids are going back to school or something like that, right? And I'm thinking, well, because you have to choose. That's the reason you got to figure this out. It's a mindset, right? Because I talk to people all the time that they figure it out. You, you know what I'm saying? They get to where they want to be. All right. They sell something. They, you know, they become even more entrepreneurial and committed or mindset you know, what you do not know, right? Um, implementation. They may say things like, well, I work full time and, you know, and and um, I don't know when I'm going to have time to grow my business. I just don't have a whole lot of time. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm just talking about mindset because there are people out there who got a lot less time than you and they're saying, I got three hours, but I'm going to give it all I have in three hours. All right. Just mindset. All right. Okay. Well, I talk myself out of it every time. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. All right. I'm just trying to break this all the way down. You know, when my husband was on dialysis, I had a lot of opportunities to be like, this is hard guys. Like three kids, husband on dialysis, two businesses, man, maybe I should just do one business. Like really? Okay. But I made it work. You know what I mean? And I'm better because of it. All right. Or who you don't know as it relates to your mindset. So your mindset, when you're dealing with affluence, you got to have the esteem to believe you deserve to be in the room. And there are lots of people that don't, they have the opportunity for the affluence access, but they got some judgment about it. They're like, those people are snobs or, you know, they, they, they kind of treat me funny or they're looking down on me. You know, maybe, maybe that's not the language, maybe it's something else, but I just want to break that down if it's you. All right. Because that's all mindset. 
right? Sometimes when we don't feel we're good enough, we create a story around that so we can believe that, so we can just turn the corner so we don't have to grow. I'm just challenging you, all right? All right? Or what you do not know as it relates to your mindset. You see, sometimes with your mindset, when it's what you don't know, it's that your ego is getting in the way. Like, you know what I mean? You, you're so busy trying to impress people with who you are and what you know and what you have that you forgot that it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. If you come to learn from your teachers, then you've got to humble yourself. You got to, you got to come to learn. Okay. Um, but it's mindset. So the ego will keep you broke all the time. Just know that if your ego is telling you things, it's the wrong thing. Always 100%. It is, all right? I can tell you this for sure, all right? But that's all mindset, all right? Um, you know what I mean? Like, you know, some people come on these live stream platforms, and they come on just to be seen. And then they can't figure out, like, three months later, they've been seen, but they're not able to, they haven't built a platform. They haven't built, you know, following. They don't have customers. Why is it? Because, you know, because of the ego, all right? Because of the ego, because of their mindset. So, number five. What, what you do not think, all right? Maybe what you don't think about yourself, maybe what you don't think you deserve, what you don't, what you don't want to do, you know what I mean? What you don't believe you can have, all of these things, you know, what you don't feel like you can, you know, um, how, how, how you, maybe you don't feel like you can, the things that you see in your, your mind's eye, you don't believe like in the truest sense they can happen for you. These are all mindsets. And those things are keeping you from the next level. I actually think that mindset is probably the biggest, the most important thing of all the things that I've said. And I always say, look, if I can do one thing for a client, if I can get that client to see how amazing they truly are, you know what I mean? Then everything from that moment on is going to change, right? But a lot of times we don't know how absolutely incredible we are, right? Because we've got self-talk, we've got damaged, damaged stories about who we're not. And those are the stories that are playing over and over and over again. And as a result of that, those are the people you're attracting in your world. People that never don't deserve your time, your talent, your attention. This is why so many people are like, why am I undervaluing my services? Because of belief, because of mindset. All right. Right. You missed the first four. Oh, Angel, I'm going to have to go back. I'll go back in a minute. OK, just for you. Just for you. All right. Just for you. All right. Um, all right. You guys want me to say it again. All right. I'll say it again. All right. So today what I'm talking about is what is getting in the way of the next level. OK, number one. All right. Now, number one. OK, um, is what you do not know. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist and a business coach. Number one, what you do not know is what is getting in the way of your next level. That means that some people aren't teachable, all right, or they're not coachable, or they think they're learning things, but they don't hear, okay? They're not hearing in the in-betweens. They kind of hear and they kind of gloss over here. They missing, they're missing steps along the way. And I'm saying that you need to be a student. Right. As it relates to what you are learning. Number two is who you do not know. That's affluence. All right. Affluence. All right. Can change your world. So you got to be connected to people who are truly affluent, who are in a position with the information that they know, the access that they have to open doors for you. And most people are surrounded with people who what they have, they need. When you're around people who are affluent, what they have, the ideas, the things that they know are abundant, okay? And as a result of that, you're not going to experience that, that, you know what I mean, that contraction. In fact, you're going to experience the opposite of that. But you got to qualify to be in the room. And I'm just saying, I'm just telling you, you got to show up. You got to show up. You got to want to be there. Number three, what do you, what you do not do? Implementation. So that is the third thing. A lot of people you know what I mean? You don't do what you need to do. All right. And as a result of that, that's keeping you from your next level. Like you do the things you like to do, but you're not doing all the things you need to do to move forward. You guys know I'm telling you the truth. It's flat the truth. All right. And I'm just calling it out if that's what you're doing. And I'm just saying that's what it is. Of course, I went deep on it. Number four, what is not available to you is also keeping you from your next level. That means that you know what? If you aren't that person that you're willing to invest in your network, all right, understanding that that's going to elevate you, what's not available to you is keeping you from your next level. And I gave an example of how, you know, because 
I invested in being a part of my sister circle, my very first true mastermind, changed my life and the life of seven women who we all were newer entrepreneurs with big dreams about what we wanted to do. And we all made those dreams happen. They were huge dreams. Like we were dreaming big things. I mean, one of my dreams was to sign my first corporate partner. And I did. Like I did. Okay. I mean, I've done it multiple times over, but I did it like with this group. It was a dream of mine. And I'm just saying what is not available to you. And sometimes it's not available because you aren't willing to invest in your network. You know, maybe you have accountable gr accountability groups. You don't even show up for them. All right. I just, I just want, I just, I'm just saying, or maybe you don't value that. All right. And you're missing out. I'm just telling you. All right. Number, number five, what you do not think your mindset, see what you don't believe you are or what you don't believe you, you deserve or you know what I'm saying the thoughts that swirl around in your head is the manifestation of what is in front of you I know this to be true if I go to somebody's website if I have a conversation with them I know every single thing I need to know about them I know your beliefs I know your beliefs based on your prices I know your beliefs based on your conversation I know your beliefs about yourself based on how you walk in the room I know your beliefs about yourself based on how you introduce yourself I know your beliefs about yourself you know what I mean I, the, you know by what you do and by what you will not do I know your beliefs about yourself based on who you choose to hang out with I know your beliefs about yourself as it relates to whether you deserve feel like you deserve to be in the room or whether you judge those that are in that room I know your beliefs about yourself when you don't do what you need to do to move forward I I, I know your beliefs about yourself when you don't want to show up in a network or with accountability partners and say I did do this or I didn't do this I know your beliefs all right and I'm just I'm just breaking down today very simply all right what might be getting in the way and keeping you from your next level and it's just these five things all right it's just these five things and I want you to get this because lots of people aren't getting it right like they're thinking it's like no 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 like you're thinking it's something else no this is probably one of these five things I guarantee you it's probably one of these five things all right and they are big things they're big things but the the biggest of them all is what you think about yourself I just want you to think about your world I want you to think about your prices I want you to think about the people thank you so much you guys are so funny am I really rocking the scoop you guys you know thank you so much um I want you to think about your prices I want you to think about what's in your world I want you to think about your investments I want you to think about your friendships and I will tell you that when you look at those things add those things up write them down for yourself and that's the sum of your beliefs mindset okay um, that's mindset all right that's what I want to share today now what was one aha that you guys got today for those of you who are just joining me I hope you can catch the replay I'm Mia Redrick I'm the mom strategist I support clients with life and business success you can check me out at uh, at miaredrick.com okay angel liked go the mindset part right my I brought that right it's true right it's it changes everything if I could get people to see in them what I see in them you know what I mean it, if I could get you to see in you what I see in you right you're amazing right you're a giant but sometimes when we don't even see what we are who we really are we sabotage the things that are the best things for us I'm just telling you it's like it's the craziest thing so the first thing you gotta work on is this right here and just, just know that's true you know what I mean it's true all right if you can work on this right here you'll ask for any single thing that you want if you believe small you'll ask for small even if the opportunity is big and huge all around you all right hey there so are there um, are any ahas anybody have any ahas um, right any ahas here comes my dog Nick. Um, are there any ahas what was one thing that you got from today's okay mindset all right that that mindset thing that's a real thing I'm glad you got it all right that mindset thing that's a real thing all right what's one other thank you so much what's another thing that somebody got anyone
What's one other thing that somebody got? Influence and affluence is key. Yes, it is. All right. Affluence, right? Right. Absolutely, right? That's right. Friends, right? Connect with people your ambition level and above. People that can elevate you. This is key. Like, it really is, okay? And, and accountability. This is why you can't... Success is not something that happens in two months. It doesn't happen in like 30 days. It's a process, okay? It's a process of many different things. And as a result of those things, you get perspective about how all of these things fit together. And always know this. So, you know... Um, I always talk about that also, but um, anything else, any other ahas, any other takeaways um, today from the broadcast? Any other takeaways? Yes, I do. I, I do. Any other takeaways? Yes, your network, what is not available to you. That's your responsibility, right? You need to have a network, right? Yes. I feel like mindset comes first and everything else follows. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, this was a fire scope. It was a good one, right? It was a good scope, right? Um, it was a good scope, right? It was a good scope. Anyone else? I already answered you. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know what that means. Do what needs to be done to make it happen. Absolutely. You got to do what needs to be done. If you're not implementing, then it's not going to happen. That's the thing. You know, that's, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, I said you do you. Yes. Why do you believe in God? Okay. There we go. Are we, do we have a troll here? You know, I just don't like to get into that. All right. So who's any other questions? Uh, anyone else? Anyone else on the floor? Okay. Okay. Oh, you're not a troll. Why do I believe in God? Because, you know, God is the center of my life. And the thing is that the truth of the matter is, okay. Oh, you're being for real, okay. Um, the truth of the because you never know on these platforms. Like, these people are, like, a little crazy a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, you kind of have to not waste your words with people who don't really want to know what you really think. But, um... But God is real. And this is one of the things that I want you guys to know. And this is why I think this is so important. Is that, you know how I always talk about authenticity and why authenticity means so much to me. To me, it's such a disservice, a disrespect, a dishonor to God who has given you gifts, right, inside of inside of you, right? He can tell, like, inside of who you are, right? Like, he's giving you you, okay? You. He's giving you you, okay, to go and touch the world with who you are. And can you imagine dishonoring those gifts, thinking that whatever you're supposed to do, you're supposed to Google search it, right? What a dishonor to God. I think what you're meant to do, your God-given purpose is inside of you. All right. It has nothing. It's not outside of you. All right. And if you really want to know what you need to do. All right. Nobody asked me this, but I'm just saying, if you really want to know what you need to do, you need to take it to God. Right. You need to talk with the Holy Spirit. You need to get clear and you need to ask God to show me what I need to do. But it's not Google searching. That's never going to be it. All right. It's not duplicating what anybody else is doing. It's not believing that what somebody else's program is or anything that anybody's launching. I don't care if it's on television. I don't care where it is. Right. Um, it, 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 it's, it's not searching that because what you are meant to do, God has already given you the seeds of greatness to plant those seeds. And if you ever want to have blessings be abundant and overflowing in your life, just listen to what he's telling you to do. All right. And you cannot do what you're supposed to do if you are a double minded man. Let me tell you what that means to me. Being double minded means that, oh, God, I trust you. But let me go see what this person is doing over here. Oh, no, no, no. I, I You know, I'm going to follow what you have put on my heart and what you told me what I should do. Oh, but let me just look and see what the fair market thing is. It's irrelevant. When I tell you this is this is what I truly believe, what I know is true. And the fact of the matter is what you are meant to do 
is all you're already set up to win all right and satan is a liar i'm telling you he comes to kill rob, rob and destroy in many ways in the sense of your confidence your faith your belief in you know what it is that's inside gifted to you already the moment that you decide that what you have isn't good enough to to go for it and that you've got to you know you gotta you gotta look around you know what i mean that's to me to mar the fact that you can trust who you are or you can trust your God-given gifts. I don't look at it. You guys know I don't I don't use social media in that way. I'm not interested in that. I trust them. I just trust them. And um, that's what I recommend. So I don't even know that that answered the question. And it was probably off topic. But that's how I feel about it. All right. Um, that's how I feel about it. And um Right, I thank God for all of our lives, right? And He's put us here for a purpose, a very distinct purpose. And we're meant to 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 realize those things. Amen. This has been another amazing school. Thank you. You're amazing. You're such a blessing. You guys are great. That's heavy. You are bold enough to be you. You gotta be you. This is the thing. It's only one you. What makes you scarce is what makes you valuable. Right? This is the thing you gotta understand. What makes you scarce is what makes you valuable. All right. And the moment that you start to be like everybody else. You're not scared. So you're like everybody else. So you're not as valuable. All right. So that's just really important. Okay. Are there any final questions? Are there any final questions? Um, any final questions, right? Thank you so much, right? Are there any final questions um, that I can um, support anyone with? If you're not connected with me already on um, MiaRedrick.com, please do. All right. Or um, Mia Redrick, the mom strategist on Facebook. Um, if you're interested in connecting with me, if coaching is something you're interested in, check out my bio here on Periscope, or you can always go to my website at miaredrick.com. All right. And I want to thank you guys for coming today. Um, going once any final questions or comments about the scope today. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you guys were here. It was a good scope this morning. I come on usually two times a day. When I work out in the mornings, I come um, on and do my scope, and then I come back in the evening and I do a mindset scope also. Or, or sometimes I'll do a business scope in the evenings. Usually in the mornings, I do more of a inspirational scope, all right? Um, depends on what I'm working, what I'm doing when I'm working out, because sometimes I'm just like, oh my goodness, you know, it takes everything that I can, all right? So I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate you guys for coming tonight. And have a great day. If you haven't shared on Twitter, on Facebook, on Periscope, this is the last time to do so because we know other people need to up-level their game too, all right? So I want to thank you for your time. Have a good night. Bye.